Hi, this is Anthony Parent of IRS Medic. And if you watched our last episode, we were talking about Canada's underused, under, unused property tax, a law that is designed to affect um, foreigners, mostly Americans, harshly, more harshly, and really it only applies to them because the law specifically exempts Canadian citizens. The reaction to this law, they're actually, and this is, this is the surprise. This is, this is what I would say good news is there's actually a U.S. representative who actually cared about this. Um, and it's uh, Representative uh, Brian Higgins. And he is from the, uh, he is from, he represents upstate New York, uh, the, the southern tier of New York. And he is all upset about this law that Canada had the gall to pass and affects everyone. So I'm going to share my screen and show you exactly what I mean. So here's the article that John wrote about it. And um, uh, Representative Brian Higgins, this is John tweeting, uh, launches a campaign seeking to carve out from Canada's vacant home tax for U.S. citizens. He argues that the Canadian tax based on citizenship violates the U.S.-Canada tax treaty and uh, the U.S., the, the new free trade agreement with the United States-Mexico. Um, now, and I'm going to, and I'm going to read, I'm going to go down just to get, I want everyone's blood to be boiling a little bit more. So I want, he's all upset. Okay. And I want to read the press release because this is where um, I think the word, yeah, hypocrisy here. Um, there's going to be some hypocrisy you, you, you might notice here. And so here is his statement that he has from his press release. Um, Congressman Brian Higgins, New York 26, is calling on the Biden administration to address Canada's underused housing tax in an upcoming discussions with the government of Canada. The new 1% tax on vacant or underused housing owned by non-residents, non-Canadians, is hitting Americans, many of whom have contributed to Canadian, Canada's economy. <laughs> all right, sorry. All right. All right. And, and I'm not laughing at, the, I'm not, I am not laughing at the hard work people have done. Uh, that's not what I'm laughing at. I'm laughing at something different, which I'm explaining. Um, many of whom have contributed to Canada's economy and owned cottages in Canada for, for generations, especially hard. In a letter to the U.S. Secretary uh, of State, Anthony Blinken, Rep Representative Higgins writes, at a time when encouraging cross-border travel and economic activity should be prioritized as both countries recovered from the COVID-19 pandemic, this is an unnecessary burden and bad faith action by the government of Canada, which violates the United States-Mexico-Canadian agreement, as well as long-standing tax treaties. In your upcoming conversations with the government of Canada, I request that objecting to this tax is a high priority. Oh boy, now, you know what? You know who I wanna ask? Keith, Keith, if you can answer this question, what do you think about those? what I just said there? Those first two paragraphs. What do you think about Brian Higgins and and that um, we have uh, unnecessary burdens? Do you think we should avoid unnecessary burdens and cross border activities, Keith? Do you think that would be a good idea? I think it would be an excellent idea. My first reaction that makes me want to vomit mm. because it's so obvious. I mean, this 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 uh, guy is uninformed. And he needs to be informed on what America is doing to every other country around the world. You go. Well stated. And here he is going after Canada for pretty much the same thing that the U.S. is doing. <laughs> yeah, no, I <laughs> absolutely it just boggles my mind. Absolutely, this is the you know right. I mean, um, 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 be careful. You know, um, think about the plank in your eye before you worry about the splinter in your buddy's eye. Um, right. and, and I don't even know if the U.S. Tax, the U.S. tax system would be two redwood, uh, massive redwoods in both eyes, um, probably something like that. Um, that's that's the level of the hypocrisy that we have here. Um, this channel is mostly. But dedicated. you know what? Yeah. You know what, Anthony? I don't think this guy realizes that he's being a hypocrite on behalf of the United States because I don't think he knows anything about what the U.S. does to other countries. Yep, I agree. Right? His. his, you know? his he doesn't represent, can, you know, he represents this district of upstate New York yeah. that crosses in, you know, and, you know, and I could get it. Like, you know, um, you know, you inherit a vacation home. Well, you, you know, you're part of your family's probably in Canada. And now you're, you're like, okay, what are we going to do with this now? Okay, now you got to scramble and figure out a way. Um, and I would say with you, I would say he is likely ignorant about the U.S. tax code because every, you know, nearly everybody is in, in Washington. Um, 
uh, yeah. that, that we, we, you know, when we, when we uh, met in 2017 and, um, and uh, we, we were in Congress and we were talking about getting, trying to get some relief from FATCA and, and the FBARs, one of the most stomach churning things for me um, was the vast ignorance by the people who claimed to be the authors of the bill and the sponsors of the bill. They had yep. no idea what they actually were talking about. And they're not meant to because their job is to sign what is in front of them. And these laws are written by who knows who. Um, and as we said, you know, you know, during that time, um, and I had a long video on that about the claimed author of the FATCA bill, she had so many things incorrect about it that I doubt she was the actual author. There were things and mistakes that the author wouldn't make ever. Um, so she claimed to write it, but where did it really come from? And that I don't think we'll ever really know. Um, but it's utterly disgusting what the United States government has been doing for a while. I want to change. I want to go over to John and ask him for his reaction to this. What, what do you think is the greatest hypocrisy about this, John? Well, the greatest hypocrisy is that uh, Congressman Higgins is complaining about citizenship taxation, basically, right? At its core, no matter how he frames it, it comes back to the notion of the tax is imposed based on citizenship or immigration status. And, and, and the United States makes a living off this, right? Yes. I mean, that's how they define tax residency. So, I mean, there's no question that, I don't know, if, you know, I was thinking about this, uh, trying to be fair-minded. Is it possible to be a hypocrite if you don't know enough, if you're so uninformed that you can't even form an intelligent opinion? I mean, I think that's the real question. Is, is yeah, that, yeah, yeah, I don't think he's saying yeah. that. Yeah, yeah I, and I think that's a fair point. He doesn't know enough to be a hypocrite. Yeah. I mean, right. is, is he really a hypocrite, or is he just so, you know, so indescribably ignorant yeah. that, you know— but but what this is, I mean, let, let's talk about this more from the point of, I mean, we all hate politicians, but but I don't hate individual people, right, you know, who are, are being harmed by this. And I agree. I think this is incredibly unjust, okay, that all of a sudden out of the blue, you know, these people who are probably, you know, just normal people, you know, just having to have a vacation home or a cottage in Canada or something like that, that all of a sudden, you know, they're being extorted to pay, you know, what's essentially a fine, right? Uh, you know, they never had to pay for years. So I think it's incredibly unfair. But I also think that it's an opportunity for, you know, I think individuals who are on both sides of the border who are, you know, severely impacted by citizenship taxation. I mean, this is the first experience for American residents. Where they're right, right, yeah citizenship-based taxation to really come together and, you know, create a united front here, okay? You know, individuals worldwide against the evil, the pure evil of citizenship taxation. Uh, and I think, you know, so Blinken, uh, what's his name, uh, Higgins is talking about, well, you know, oh my God, this is such an issue. He wants the Secretary of State to raise this in President Biden's visit. You know, oh my God. I mean, this is incredible. But, you know, I think it's an opportunity for... Yeah mass demonstration, people on both sides of the border who object to citizenship taxation, because that's what it really is. I mean, do I agree with Congressman Higgins' son, Fair? You bet I do. Okay. But, uh, you know, I think, number one, it is important that he understand that this type of stuff is just business as usual for the United States. But also his claims that, you know, this violates the Canada-U.S. tax treaty and or the you know, the, the free trade agreement, you know, as I wrote in the post, is, I believe, completely baseless. I mean, I actually went into the treaties and explained exactly why this stuff doesn't, uh, et cetera. It's just, it's just nasty, unfair a taxation based on citizenship, and that's the, you know, which is basically based on circumstances of birth. That's what citizenship usually is. Oh, my God, you were, weren't born in Canada. We're going to make you pay an extra tax, right? Um well, this is what I'm thinking of. If, if Representative Higgins was watching this podcast, I hope he is, um, what would I say to him? And this is sort of where I would start off. I said, look, your ignorance about this is understandable. You're only a U.S. representative. And I mean, and I'm, I'm not I'm not being glib. But you, you, you know, how you come into this and how you come, you know, you're talking about your local politics and you're trying to represent your people. And you're not that that this tax issue and this is what i'm saying it's been taken off of everybody's radar 
It's off of everybody's radar. The, 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 he's one representative. And is it realistic to expect this one representative? Ah, you know what? I see this issue here. Oh, my Lord, look at what we've been doing for the last 120 years as we've been squeezing the country more and more with each, each progressive lie. Um, so what I would say to him is this. This is where I would say Representative Higgins and any representative watching this trying to figure out why we're so upset. This is where I would want you to start. Look at Title 26 of the U.S. Code. Look at those definitions of the words they say. And if you find something there, you'll say, look for it, do a control F citizenship. Do control C and you will not find anything in there. That the worldwide taxation that we are all ruled under isn't even something that's part of our law. It's not defined as such. Rather, where we must go to, def to find the citizenship-based taxation, the authorization for it, is in the regulations. So that's what you need to look at. We don't even have a law that says citizenship based taxation. It's all done by regulation. And this is what I'm this is why I'm understanding of these representatives because it's been taken away from you. And you didn't know that. You didn't know that your job is to represent people. Well, the whole idea of representing people on taxes is all taken away from you. Um, it's all been done by regulation. There's not so so that is one thing. So one fix. And if I was if I was looking to get on the good graces of people and sort of make sure that I had the right argument to say, like, wait a second, let's take a look at these regulations. And we know with um, the Supreme Court with the the recent EPA case, you know, they're they're kind of looking at regulations a little closer. That the regulation must be something that you know is is authorized by the law, and it's not taking something no one voted for, citizenship based taxation. No one voted for that ever. It's never been done, um, and which massive, massive com complications. Now, and when we get to discrimination too, this is the other way. What, you know, and I just had this hypothetical in my head, John, while you were describing this law, and it hit everything. The way the United States discriminates. Here's a big one. This is a big one. Um, the I, United States of America discriminates on a state tax. If you are a U.S. person. You get a massive exemption and lower tax rates and you know various ways to plan. If you are a non-US person who has you know property, you dine here, you are subject to an incredibly aggressive estate tax plan. Um, and it's really something you have to watch out for. You really don't want things in your own name um, if you're a non-US person, because there's the, the exemption is very, very small. The tax immediately comes in. And so the very it, it's a, it's it's different on purpose. There is a you know non-resident a uh, state tax, and then there's a citizen estate tax. Very clear. So these are the things that we're doing, you know. And this is where I would say, well, maybe we need to look at that too. Why, if we're looking for Canada not to discriminate against us, we need to start looking at all the various ways our own law e internally uh, discriminates against non-U.S. persons for not really, you know. It's like, well, what's the policy reason why we're doing it? And the answer is because we can get away with it. And that's not a great answer. I don't think that's a great answer. Um, yeah, I think, I think, yeah, the key point here, Anthony, is that this Canadian tax is a tax based on citizenship in the same way the U.S. tax system operates taxation based on citizenship. And this is, a you know, the impetus, if you will, an opportunity to really consider the question, okay, you know, isn't taxation based on citizenship? namely circumstances of birth rather than circumstances of life, always a form of evil? And I think the answer is yes. Well, maybe, you know, maybe we can get uh, Representative Higgins to uh, to join the fight if he can see it. And this is his opportunity to, to really see what it is. And, you know, one of the things that we didn't quite touch on um, during this and sort of our laughs is, is, you know, how, you know, he's like, hey, look, we really can't have these things hindering our cross-border activity. It really hurts both of us, especially in a border state like New York. Look, you're really dependent on a lot of that Canadian trade. I agree with him 100%. Uh, I agree with them 100%. We need to get trade going more between, and you know, uh, Canada, you know, is a great is a great uh, customer, is an, also a great producer of many many things. Um, but the problem, and this is really where it's the absurdity, is dare, dare be a U.S. person who who has an investment in the in 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 uh, Canada, or be a Canadian who has an investment in the U.S see what happens and see what your tax picture comes like, see how popular you are with your other investors, see how limited and how hand and, and uh, how you can't take advantage of certain things other people can. See how utterly frustrating it is when you're banging your head up against the wall and thinking, 
is my government really my enemy? I think, well, the answer to that is clearly yes. But I think, I think you know, to, to sort of pair this down to, I think, a very important point and suggestion is this. I think Congressman Higgins actually, although he doesn't know it today, is a natural ally in the fight against citizenship yeah. And I think that's actually very, very good. We we have someone who's interested in that that he he's you know what and he's he's hopefully he's a newbie waking his eyes up and you know he's the fish out of water right this is the movie where he's the fish out of water and now we helpfully educate him on whoa bud wait till you wait till you get to the bottom of this barrel that um, never quite ends there it keeps going wait till you see what this is truly about and you'll truly truly and I think that's the thing. I think that a lot of representatives are kept ignorant about this. They don't know. It's not on their radar. It's all regulation. So it's not something they think about. And that's by design because no one would ever get reelected. And that's it. it. No one would ever get reelected who voted for this system of taxation that we have. They'd be out on the street. And that's why they had to do it through regulations. And it's, you know, a very sneaky way. What I would challenge Congress to do is take back your authority. Um, that would be a nice thing to do so that you can represent um, your constituency, not these um, regulatory agencies that you don't even know what they're doing. Okay. So with that, what is our next episode about? Well, um, we're going to continue this topic. Oh, I know what it is. I know what it is because I was thinking of this as we were going through it. I'm like, oh, boy, because this is what's going to happen. I'm going to get calls. And, John, you're going to get calls. Keith, you're going to get calls from people. They're going to be wondering, hey, I heard about this thing you were mentioning in that, that, that podcast about the unused property tax Canada. Yeah, I have a property up there. What was that thing you were mentioning, the F bar? What was that about? Oh, that's and that's so we suspect that this is going to uh, illuminate uh, many people to the F bar FACA problems. And, and if, if Representative Higgins and his staff is watching this, this the next podcast would be a fantastic place uh, for you to start with some of the, 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 the terror stories that happen and how people are often forced to decide um, between, um, you know, giving up their U.S. citizenship or doing something they really didn't want to do because the tax and the compliance is utterly strangling them from life. It certainly wouldn't be the thing anyone would fight for independence uh, to get into. Yet here we most certainly are. Uh, this is Anthony Parent of IRS Medic. John Richardson, I want to thank him before. And again, follow that link to his article where he could, goes in his detail to show, like, no, the, the tax tree is fine and it doesn't impact any trade deals. And I want to also thank Keith Redmond uh, as well. And we will see you on our next episode as we go over some of the things you may be coming to light to, to light with as you go down this rabbit hole. Again, this is Anthony Parent of IRS Medic. Thanks for watching.